This video will show you how to hook up the wiring on your Boost Auto Parts tow mirrors for your Colorado or Canyon. To see how to mount the mirrors, please reference a separate Boost Auto Parts video. First thing we're going to do is kind of walk this grommet out. You can just kind of do this by hand. Kind of pull out and the grommet will come loose. Now on the back side of the grommet, we're just going to cut a little slit very carefully with the razor blade so that we'll be able to insert our wires and get it actually behind the door. Now you're going to take your extension harness lead provided by Boost Auto Parts and just plug it in. You will have a varying amount of wires depending on what options your mirrors have. Now what you're going to want to do is get a thin piece of wire. You can use a metal clothes hanger if that's what you have around. And then you're going to take all the wires, you're going to put them onto that firm piece of wire, kind of twist them around it, and then just use some electrical tape to hold it to that wire. We're going to be using this technique various times throughout the installation to get wires ran through rubber grommets in tight areas. We'll just go ahead and run our wires through the boot. You may need to use some needle nose pliers and just grab them as they come through. You're just going to want to pull all your wire through. And just kind of carefully pull it, make sure it's not getting caught on the other end. And you're just going to want to leave just enough slack so that it has room to travel up to the OEM connector. Now we're going to take out the speaker at the top of it. There's a 7 millimeter bolt. We'll take that out. And then the speaker is just held on by gravity, so you'll kind of pull out at the top a little bit. If your speaker's never been out, it may be a little stuck. You may have to get a flathead screwdriver in there, but it'll pull out at the top and then lift up. And then you just have one connector on the back side. You'll just depress the lever and the speaker will come undone. Now we're going to take our wires from the grommet down through the speaker hole. So we'll kind of run those straight down, grab them with our other hand. We're doing all of this work with the window down so that we're making sure all of our wires are going to be clear of the window track. And we'll pull all our slack while we're doing this. Make sure that you do not let the wires chafe on the metal as it's coming down. And then we'll just go ahead and tuck our rubber grommet back in. going to remove the 10 millimeter bolt holding the door stop on. This will be tight, so you'll just go ahead and remove it. Now your door will have a little bit more movement at this point, so just be mindful of that. Remove this door jam connector right down here. To do that, we're just going to take a flathead screwdriver, slide the lever all the way up, and then the connector will just pull out. Now you're just going to want to carefully fish all of the wires onto the side of the connector as shown here in this video. Be sure not to let the wires chafe as they're going through and then you'll just carefully pull them through on the other side. Now we need to poke a small hole in this boot here so we can run our wires through. So you want to be at the top of the boot, just using a sharp device, poke the hole out. Now go ahead and run all the wires through the hole in the rubber boot that you just made. It is important to note that you will want to bring the ground into the cab of the truck as the door is not a sufficient ground. So go ahead and just bring all the wires through, being careful not to chafe them, and just pull the slack through. Now we're going to go ahead and remove the boot from over here. So you can just kind of use your hands, work it on out, and you should be able to pull it back just like this. Now we're just going to run the wires through this boot with the same technique we showed you earlier. So kind of start out the wires running at the top of the boot. Of course, make sure you're not hitting any other wires. You can just kind of fish it through. When you get towards the end, it'll help if you kind of curl it up just like this. And your wires will come through. Then you can just kind of pull on your wires. And then you can pull the metal rod back out the other side. Then you will pull all the wire through, being careful not to chafe anything. Now you're just going to want to get your rubber boot back around. Just do this by hand. Now we're going to take it and we're going to run the wires in through the little hole. I find it's easiest to kind of put a little bit extra slack in there. It'll make finding it on the other side a little bit easier. So I run a little bit in. Then you're going to want to go in on the other side and grab it. Now 
once you have it in, you'll just want to carefully take all your slack inside. Careful not to chafe any of the wires on the metal as you're coming in. Now we just need to put this connector back on. To just get it lined back, pushed together. Then you can press down at the latch at the top. You want to hear that clip, that'll signify that it's got a full tight connection. If you'd like, you can just go ahead and use some electrical tape and tape over the wires running through there so that you don't see the colored wires coming in. You will want to repeat the same process we showed on the driver's side on the passenger side. Be sure to put the rubber door boot back to its original position when you're done. If you're having issues getting the wires into the cab from the opening on the other side, you may find it's easier to run the metal rod from the inside of the cab to the outside, tape the wires to it, and then pull it back in like you were fishing. You should not need to remove any junction or fuse boxes, however some do find it's easier to pull them out of the way. Right now we just need to get the wires from the passenger side over to the driver's side. So again we're using our wire and we're just going to run it straight through this area right over here and we're going to pick it up as we get on the other side. As you can see, our wires have popped out over here, so we'll just go ahead and take them off the rod, pull them straight on through. Now included with your mirrors would be a varying amount of these taps. These taps have a T-tap as well as a disconnect and a butt connector on them. They also feature an inline fuse so that you're fusing your connections. So we're going to be working with the body control module. The body control module is going to be here on the driver's side. We've removed some trim panels here to get easier access for videoing, but you can leave those on and just work from the bottom side. If you got switchback or signal and running light option, you're going to want to get the black connector out. So we'll just depress the tab at the front and pull the connector straight out. You can bring it down to work with it right down here. Now what we're going to do is take our running light wires. So in this case, they are blue and we're going to twist the two sides together. We're going to take our disconnect provided by Boost Auto Parts, place the wire straight into there, make sure it slides all the way into the butt connector, slide it up, and we'll go ahead and crimp it down. After that's done, you'll just want to apply some heat. These are shrink wrap butt connectors. Now we're going to take our T-tap and we're going to go on to pin 7. In this case, it's going to be the second row down from the top on the far right hand side. You're going to want to go off the pin location, not the wire color, but in this case it is going to be a brown wire with a light blue stripe. We'll go ahead and place the T-tap on there, fold the T-tap around and clip it over. If you do have issues getting the T-tap, you'll just want to take some needle nose pliers and just squeeze it a little bit. should feel it kind of locked down. Then we're going to take our disconnect and we're just going to plug it in. We're going to take our right turn signal wire. We'll just go ahead and strip a little bit of the insulation back. Then we're going to take our tap provided by Boost Auto Parts. Slide that, slide the wire right in the butt connector. And go ahead and just crimp that down. Of course, you then also want to apply heat around here to shrink that around it. Now we're going to take the T-tap and we're going to go into pin 3, which is going to be the green with violet stripe. It's going to be in the top row here, one over from the right. So we're just going to take our T-tap, go around it. And we'll just kind of clip it down. Then we're going to take our signal for the right side and just plug it into there. So we'll just go ahead and depress the tab towards the front and pull it straight back. And it will just come out just like that, and then you'll bring it down. Now we're going to show you how to install the dual function cargo in reverse module. If you purchase the mirrors as cargo only, you can skip over this portion of the video and just resume when we go to hooking up the white wire onto the BCM. So the first wire we're going to tap in is going to be in slot three. So that's going to be in the first row and it's going to be the far right. So what we'll do is locate the wire. The wire colors may vary. So you want to reference off the pin location here. In this case, it's going to be green with white. And we're just going to take our T-tap, place the wire in it. If you're having trouble getting the T-tap on, you may want to just use some needle nose pliers and squeeze it. Now we're going to take the other T-tap and we're going to locate the brown wire with white stripe. It's going to be in the second row down and you'll see first, second, third. It's going to be in the fourth over from the left if you're looking at it from the rear. So in this case, there's a brown wire with purple stripe next to it. We're going to locate the brown wire with white stripe. Take our T-tap, just crimp it right onto that wire. 
Now we're going to take the module provided by Boost Auto Parts and install it. The orientation of this is very important. You're going to want the blue ring to face towards the wire in slot 3. In this case, this was the green wire with white stripe. So we're just going to take it and plug it in. You should see the metal go straight in. So just go like that. Now this is a flexible piece, so just kind of bend it over and plug it into the other T-tap, just like so. Now we're going to hook up the cargo. To do that, we're going to take our white wire for both sides. Just go ahead and strip back the insulation. These are going to go to the same tap location. So I'll just go ahead and strip back a decent amount of the wire for each side. Go ahead and position them together. Just kind of twist them together. Just like so. And we're going to slide it into the butt connector. And we'll just go ahead and crimp it down. Then you'll just want to apply some heat, shrink that down as it is a shrink wrap butt connector. Now we're going to take our T-tap and we're going to go on to pin 7. That is going to be the second row down, 4 from the left. In this case, it's going to be a brown wire with white stripe. You can see we actually already have a T-tap on here. This is because the reverse and cargo harness has already been installed in this video. Essentially, you will have two taps on this wire if you do the dual function, reverse and cargo. So we're just going to take the T-tap, go on to the brown wire with white stripe, just fold it over. And we're going to take the disconnect with the white wires running to it and just plug it into it. So you can see we're on that brown with white stripe right there. If you do have the dual function reverse and cargo, your module will get installed here. Now we're going to be finally working with the brown connector. So that's going to be three up. We'll just go ahead and unplug it. So we'll depress the tab at the top, unplug it, and then we'll bring it down. We can work with it down here. Now we're going to hook up the left turn signal. To begin, we're just going to go ahead and strip back the insulation on the red wire with yellow stripe for the left turn signal. So just go ahead and strip that back. We're going to place it into the butt connector. And we'll just go ahead and crimp that down. Now we're going to take a T-tap and we're going to go on to pin 2. This is going to be the light blue with white in the top row here. Now you can see we have T-taps over here. This is for a different kit offered by Boost Auto Parts. Just disregard that for all purposes of installing the tow mirrors. So we're just going to go ahead and take the T-tap. We're going to go onto the blue wire with white stripe located in slot 2. Just slide the T-tap over. If you have any issues getting it to latch, just go ahead and grab some needle nose pliers and squeeze it down. Now we're just going to take the disconnect and plug it right in. You should see the metal go into the middle of the T-tap. So when all is said and done, again, you have your left turn signal going onto the blue wire with white stripe located in pin two here. Now we'll just go ahead and slide the brown connector back in. You should hear and feel it clip. Just gonna wanna take your taps, tuck them all back behind this area right in here. You can see we've used a few uh, zip ties to kind of keep things up out of the way. Now for the ground, you're certainly gonna wanna make sure you ground out in the cab, but you can ground anywhere in the cab using whatever method you'd like. Here we've just picked up a little ring terminal available at any hardware store. We've ran both black wires to here. And if you don't have anywhere else to ground, you can certainly ground it to this location. This is just a good metal surface we found. So just go ahead and take that and we're just gonna put it in here. After the installation is complete, when your running lights are on, if you have switchbacks, it will be a solid white light. And when your turn signals come on, as shown here, it will flash amber. And when they turn off, it will return to a solid white light. Now, if we come around, as you can see, you will have your signal on the glass, shown here. And to get this light to come on, you will press the cargo light. Or if you do the cargo in reverse, you'll also put it in reverse. If you did cargo only or cargo and reverse and you want to command your lights on in park or neutral, you'll just press your cargo button located right here. Now if you do reverse in cargo at night when you unlock your truck, as shown here, your cargo light will come on so it will work as approach lighting. You do need the reverse in cargo option to enable this feature. Boost Auto Parts, aftermarket, accessory, solutions.